Welcome to my show, honey. Welcome to Soraya's Kitchen. When you're feeling blue, you don't know what to do. Carrying such a heavy load, honey, feels like you're all alone. You need a new recipe, well, I'm the one to see. Tiny rolls along you, wanna hear my song? So welcome to my show. Welcome to Soraya's Kitchen. My show is so hot, honey. The fish, the meat. Oh. Hey darlings, my name is the Super Sexy, Super Fabulous, and Super Desirable. So rise for the doll. Welcome to my kitchen, welcome to my show, Olas. Now, today, on this episode, we're making a recipe that I have been wanting to make for such a long time, such a long time, and it's cashew cheese. Now, a lot of you know, and if this is your first time watching my show, thanks for watching, thanks for stopping in. So, my recipes on Sarai Superdazki's cooking show is gluten-free, dairy-free, and sugar-free. So, I don't use any dairy products. I use a lot of coconut milks in my recipes. And when a recipe calls for cheese, I've been experimenting with cashew cheese. I wanted to perfect it a little bit, of course, before I introduce a recipe on the show. So today's recipe is Soraya Sobedas, Catch Me If You Can, Dairy Free Cashew Cheese. So honey, catch me if you can, because Soraya Sobedas is on the move, honey. I'm moving to Cali. I'm looking to move into Long Beach. So, and if you catch me in Cali, that's even better, darling. Catch me anywhere is good. But yes, I am moving, and this is my recipe of cashew cheese. Okay, so let's go through the ingredients. I'm gonna take a half a pound of organic raw cashew. Now, you soak them in water for a couple of hours. What I do with my cashew cheese is that I boil the cashew for about 20 minutes, and then I rinse it, and then I let it cool in room temperature, and then that's how I start my cashew cheese. I'm using apple cider vinegar. I'm using an eighth cup of nutritional yeast. Now, nutritional yeast even has like a cheesy flavor to it. I've put nutritional yeast over, you know, microwave popcorn, and it really gives it a nice cheesy flavor. I'm using an eighth cup of broth or liquid or water. I'm using broth. I'm using a smoked turkey neck bone broth. I'm adding two cloves of garlic. I'm adding some lemon juice. I'm adding a tablespoon of a natto-infused olive oil. I'm going to add a little bit of sweetener, like maybe one teaspoon of stevia just to sweeten it up. It's a very easy recipe. What you'll need is a food processor and you will need some cheesecloth. I like wrapping my or uh, the mixture, boiling it and then placing it in a cheesecloth and then leaving it in the fridge for a few hours. I like my cashew cheese firm like most things. I like most things firm <laughs> and my cashew cheese is one of them. So I like to boil it up in, in a cheesecloth, get any excess liquid out because I like my cashew cheese firm so I could slice it and then put it in the fridge. Um, sometimes it takes about an hour or two in the fridge depending on the firmness and consistency. Sometimes I can boil it up, leave it in the refrigerator for about a half hour and then take it out and slice it. So we're going to get into the recipe right now. And thank you so much for coming to my show. I really appreciate it. Yes, let's go. Hey darling, so we're back. Okay, let's go through the ingredients again. We're adding some apple cider vinegar. Okay, we're adding a little bit of truvia, we're adding a little bit of lemon, we're adding our nutritional yeast, uh, let's see, a little bit of mustard, a little bit of mustard, Dijon, and we're definitely going to need our food processor for this recipe. Now, I've already soaked the cashew, they're raw, and I let them boil for 20 minutes, and they're cooled off. I have my poppy food processor here, which you can't see right now, but you'll see in a little bit. <laughs> The recipe is super, 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 super easy. One, two, three, four. The recipe is super, 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 now, Papi Food Processor is so happy, and the reason why he's so happy is because uh, with the move, I'm selling appliances, and he's not for sale, darling. I will keep my darling Cuisinart Papi Food Processor forever. So, we have the cashews there. I have the nutritional yeast here. I'm going to add 
an eighth of a cup and I'm just going to measure out the nutritional yeast and put it there. We're going to just go ahead and add a pinch of the stevia. And we're going to add the lemon here. Um, I'm going to also add my stock, which is going to be a one eighth of stock. This is my turkey stock. I'm adding my two cloves of garlic. I'm adding, it's just going to be a teaspoon of mustard, a little squirt, and then I'm going to add a tablespoon of my apple cider vinegar. That's really cool. And we're just going to add a little bit of salt to taste. And then we're also going to add a tablespoon of my natto infused olive oil because that just gives it such a nice color. Do you see? And then we're going to take her. And the smell of cashew cheese is so incredible. We're just going to stir it up, get all the sides in there. Oh, she's so beautiful. Look at her. She's gorgeous. We're going to blend it up some more. I want it to be really smooth. Okay, darling. It's almost done. See, I like it when my cashew cheese forms into a ball. You see that? When my cashew cheese it gets firm, then it could be sliceable, honey. Okay, like these right here, I, these are my cashew cheeses. These are mine. I was born with them. This is my dairy-free cheese, okay? <laughs> and so when they form into a ball like this, two balls, then I know they're tasty. Same thing with my cashew cheese. So I got into this really nice ball. See? Oh, it's so cool. I love using my hands with, with food, right? I'm a little nervous that because of the anato it's going to stay in my hands. So I have gloves, which is really cool. Because I really want to get my hands on that cashew cheese for me. Okay? Now I have synthetic hair, so you know, I touch my hair. Touching food. Alright. Uh, okay, good. Oh my gosh, she's so beautiful. I, she's just so, she's so beautiful. She's so beautiful. Look at her. Can you see? This is like dough. This, this feels and looks like dough for like my empanadas, okay? It really does. And it's just so beautiful. Now, can you see? It's, it's beautiful. It's, I don't even think it's going to need the cheesecloth. But I, I like using the cheesecloth because it gives it a nice texture. Like cheesecloth itself gives it this really cool thing. So cool. It's like a scar. Alright? So this is my darling. You see how beautiful? And then uh, I have like two, two ply on the cheesecloth. And then we're going to put it in the refrigerator for about an hour. Okay darlings, I just wanted to show you again, just in case. You see how beautiful she forms? Alright, she's beautiful, beautiful. So I'm wrapping her in the cheesecloth again. I'm just showing you just to make sure that you got it, I got it. And then I just, I just twist it a little bit and I'm going to put it in the refrigerator. So while we're waiting for the cashew cheese to firm up, okay, I'm going to cook some plantains that I have. And I'm also going to talk to you a little bit about weight loss recipes because all of my recipes are weight loss recipes. I came up with these recipes because I met Junita Perez who was 220 pounds, right? That's the story. And him and I were very similar. I had already lost my weight for a very, 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 very long time. And when I met Junita Perez, he was down and out eating too much KFC, just like our first video says, it's the truth. He was drinking too much beer, smoking too many cigarettes, eating too much KFC and other things that weren't that great for him, w weren't good for him at all. So I had uh, introduced a couple of recipes and him and I together kind of been working through the years to develop these fabulous recipes. Now uh, the recipes are weight loss geared because He's Puerto Rican, I'm Puerto Rican, and I enjoy my Puerto Rican foods. And so therefore we come up with all these different types of ways of cooking our traditional Puerto Rican meals and dishes in a weight loss mode, right? Because Junito and I, myself too, I'm still a volume eater. Junito's a volume eater big time. 
So we create weight loss recipes that allows us to have a large portion of the meal of the recipe, yet either lose weight over time, which is the goal, and then maintain weight over time, which is the goal. And for us and for me, we are maintaining our weight loss. That's our goal a day at a time. So I'm going to just simply just pan fry with a nonstick skillet and cooking spray. And the nonstick skillet that I use is a Cuisinart skillet. Well, all my pots and pans are Cuisinart because they've been supporting Terrasa with our Fierce Cooking Show. They're so fierce. And then the appliances that we have are Cuisinart. So we're gonna slice the sweet plantains, which are maduros. They're right here, okay? Mwah. And we're just gonna pan fry them. And then I'm gonna put these to the side because what's gonna happen with the cashew cheese that I made today, which is our recipe, of Soraya's Catch Me If You Can Before I Move to Cali Cashew Cheese. Um, we're gonna use that cashew cheese to make uh, a pastelon, which is the Puerto Rican lasagna, but usually the pastelon calls for uh, dairy cheese. And in this case, we're not using dairy cheese. Even though I have a recipe of the pastelon on YouTube when I was eating dairy, that was some years ago. So, but I'm not gonna make the, the cashew cheese pastelon today, but I wanna talk a little bit more about weight loss and weight loss recipes while I cook my maduros. I have a little bit of olive oil on the skillet and cooking spray on a nonstick. And I have these plantain sliced for my pastelon. I love the Smart Balance cooking spray. We're gonna cook these about two to three minutes aside. Now my plantains are cooking really nice. Now, as opposed to the maduros being deep fried, these are not deep fried. You get them nice and soft, you know? You don't need to deep fry everything. Uh, and that's what the whole weight loss recipes for me on my cooking show, so I asked with us this cooking show is all about. They don't need to be deep fried. They're nice and soft. They're gonna be luscious, okay? And um, yeah, they're just really, really cool. I made my plate of maduros. They're not deep fried, so that's fine. We're gonna take out the cashew cheese. Let's get a plate for her. I should get my Marilyn Monroe plate, but I'm not. I got my Batman plate. I'm gonna unwrap her. Oh, she's so beautiful. Look at her. She is gorgeous. Look at the cashew cheese. Look at how it formed. It's beautiful. I'm gonna take a little piece of her with a piece of plantain. So this concludes my recipe. This is beautiful. The cashew cheese with a piece of plantain. Delightful, delightful. I will talk to you soon. Bye. The recipe is super, 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 super easy. One, two, three, four. The recipe is super, 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 there's a brand of vegetarian chicken salad and vegetarian chicken salad sandwich that is the best. They're based in Brooklyn by Natural Power Food Inc. They make these sandwiches, this healthy chicken salad sandwich. Oh my God. Amazing. This is amazing. This is amazing. Now, the chicken salad is good, but you know what's even better is the vegetarian turkey salad. Amazing favorite lunch in the whole wide world besides a stunning, you know, Latino papi or blanquito morenito. All of them taste good. That's number one. Number two would be this vegetarian chicken salad. Now, the vegetarian chicken salad that they make by our Powerful Foods, which is Healthy Eats, I believe. That's the brand in Brooklyn. I should go work for them so I can find out what their secret recipe is. Because I've tried other vegetarian chicken salads and turkey salads. None is as good as that brand. If you live in New York and you go to the Whole Foods stores 
and you look for it, if you find the vegetarian turkey, buy it. They're hard to find, but the vegetarian chicken is number two. Really, really good. They sell these in containers too, and which is just the salad. And so I'll have my G&G Scandinavian brand crisp bread to go with it, or my Susie's lightly salted brown rice crackers to go with it, which I adore. So that concludes my little review. Favorite lunch. Please look me up on Instagram. Please like my videos here and subscribe to me here on YouTube. And Facebook me and all of that Twitter stuff, all that cute stuff. Let's stay in touch. What are your favorite crackers? What are your favorite low-fat lunches that you make or that you go out and buy? What, what do you like to eat? But why don't we talk about it? Just comment and we'll chat. Okay, so again, thank you for coming. My name is Sarai Sobada, the queen of healthy Latin cooking. Bye. Welcome to my show, honey. Welcome to Soraya's Kitchen. When you're feeling blue, you don't know what to do. Carrying such a heavy load, honey. Feels like you're all alone. You need a new recipe. Well, I'm the one to see. Time it rolls along. You wanna hear my song? So show is so hot, honey. The fish, the meat. Oh. Hello everybody, Olas. My name is the super sexy, super fabulous, and super desirable, Sarai Sarada. I'm the queen of healthy Latin cooking, and welcome to my kitchen, welcome to my show. Now, today is another day. Woo, yay! Now, the last little episode that I did, right, that was my apple cider vinegar tea that I introduced to you, right? It was a recipe that my mother introduced to me when I was a little child and I wanted to really focus on the benefits of apple cider vinegar in that segment. I'm going to use the apple cider vinegar in my adobo uh, rub, my wet rub. This is another recipe from my mom and she taught me this when I was very, very young. So what it is, is an adobo rub is like a, a marinade and you can either have a seco adobo or a wet adobo uh, and they could be rubs either way, uh, a wet rub or a dry rub. I rather have a wet rub. <laughs> um, and I'm going to introduce that condiment because it's really a spice. It's a condiment for your meat. Poultry, chicken, turkey, veal, beef, pork. This is excellent. Now if you get to do this marinade, this adobo rub, and you season your meat and with it and you let it marinate a day or two overnight, it really gives your meats such a flavor. I have a very good friend of mine who swears by this adobo rub. She came one time to my house to eat. We were in our teens. I was a little boy then. A diva now. And my friend loved it. So it's tried and true. Many Latinos have their versions of it. So but mine, I use the apple cider vinegar. Why not, right? It's a really cool thing to use instead of white uh, vinegar or red wine. You see apple cider vinegars. We're using the Bragg apple cider vinegar again. Since my show I've been drinking even more of it, uh, consuming more of the teas or just maybe putting it in some cool water with a couple of tablespoons, not even putting any sweetener in it. The apple cider vinegar is really good for your digestive tract. There's some other ingredients. Ginger is good for your digestion. Some fennel seed put in, in like in a tea as well. You know, there's so many different things. Again, the focus on this little episode, again, we're looking at the apple cider vinegar. Bragg. Uh, this is the only brand that I'll buy. Very popular. And so we're going to use a quarter cup. Now, equal parts of vinegar and oil. So a quarter cup of the apple cider vinegar and a quarter cup of olive oil. Now, if you can infuse your olive oil with achote seeds and use that, that's really cool because you're going to get the best color on your marinade. Your meats are going to just be so golden brown. I didn't get a chance to do the anato infusion with the oil today. So we're going to use just regular olive oil. So again, a quarter cup of apple cider vinegar, quarter cup of olive oil. Your choice, I particularly love Goya. It's just so Latin, they mean a lot to me. Other Latin brands, La Flor, Badia is another brand that I like. So I have uh, La Flor turmeric. Uh, I have garlic powder. Also, La Flor. I have ground cumin, cumino, and I have oregano leaves. So, what we do is we, we put all the ingredients in like a jar or a container, or whatever, and you mix it all up and you have it in your refrigerator. So, whenever you're going to season any meat, you could just put a tablespoon or two, depending on how many pounds of meat you're making. And that's going to go by your preference. You're going to have to kind of decide 
it, you know, how many tablespoons or how many pounds of meat, you're going to have to feel that out yourself. Now, everybody's salt and spice preferences are kind of their own. Okay, I'm just going to get the camera down. We'll be back, my darlings, to Soraya Sobredas Fields Cooking Show. Ah. <laughs> Getting ready to toy you, too, the toy Jackson girl here. <laughs> we'll be right back. Woo! So I have a quarter cup in here, a measuring cup. And what I'm going to do is, I'm just going to measure it out. And then I may bring the, uh, the bowl to the camera so you can get a, a nice close look. You just do a quarter cup of your oil. And then I'm doing a quarter cup of the brads, which you shake the brads because it does have some solids of the apple. Whatever. Just shake it. <laughs> That's just how wholesome this vinegar is, is that it's, um, I think it's unfiltered. It's just very natural, darling, like Soraya honey. You make me feel like a natural diva When my soul was in the lost and found, baby You came along, sugar, to claim it I didn't know, honey, just what was wrong with me To your kiss, help me name it now I'm no longer doubtful of what I'm cooking for Cause if I make it hot and tasty and you wanna come back for more Cause you make me feel You darling, you make me feel You make me feel like a natural diva Oh, sugar, what you done to me? You make me feel so good inside. Whatever, whatever recipe. Cause when you're here with me, baby, and I'm cooking, you make me feel so alive. You make me feel. You, darling, you make me feel, baby. You make me feel like a natural. Diva. All right, quarter cup, quarter cup. And now with the spices, I'm gonna add half a teaspoon. And what I have is turmeric for color. Okay, you may not be able to see all the little details here, but I just added half a teaspoon of turmeric. I'm garlic, honey, oh child, honey. I'm a garlic queen, honey. So I'm adding a tablespoon of garlic. Now, see now how the spices go. Spices go in accordance to the spice chain of preference, right? Garlic is very, very important as a marinade. Turmeric, if you put too much turmeric, it ends up being a little bitter. And we just want some color. So that's why we're going with a tablespoon of garlic powder, half a teaspoon of turmeric. Now, cumin is an in-betweener, okay? So meaning that it's something we want uh, to taste, but... Not as, not as much as we want the garlic to come through. So with the cumin, I'm going to go with a teaspoon and then another half. So we have one and a half teaspoons of the ground cumin. Oregano is kind of an upfronter as well, as almost as upfront of a spice, something we want to come through with this rub, like the garlic. So I'm going with the tablespoon plus they're oregano flakes, so it gives you that cute little specky green uh, effect on your marinade, on your meats, you know, like, I don't know if you've noticed on my Instagram lately, I've been doing a lot of sassonados, that's what I call it, that this is, this rub is a sassonado, it's like sasson, it's, a, it's your own sasson, right, sasson's a flavoring and enhancer, but no chemicals, no artificial food coloring scheme, so I saw it last week's cooking show. So when you, I posted my picture saying like, here's my turkey breast, bastante asazonado. <laughs> well, my turkey breast is very sazonado. And you'll see the little specks of oregano that looks so cool and it tastes fantastic, right? The like oregano, the cumin, the garlic, you know, all of that is fabulous. And oh, one thing that I, I do not have on the counter, which I'll go get right now. Cha is Mr. Dobo, honey. Yes, cha. Now, honey. The adobo is crucial, honey. This is for the salt. Now, the adobo already has the garlic and already, but I'm a spicy girl, honey. I'm a spicy, 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 spicy girl. And I, I like my spice, honey. Now, here, 
Um, now this is a prominent spice. This is our salt, basically. So I'm gonna do two tablespoons of the Goya adobo. All right, and that really completes, for this recipe, all of my uh, spices that I'm adding. Now, some people have, they add like sofrito to this too. Or, or like uh, fresh garlic is even better than the powder, right? We all know that. Uh, so you may want to go with the fresh garlic. You may want to add a couple of cubes of sofrito to this. I've seen some people do it. I've never done it like that. But I'm sure it's going to be fabulous, right? That's the green pepper. You have garlic and then you have, you have cilantro. You have regal. That's fabulous. Actually, and speaking of that, let's get really creative. And I have some dried cilantro, which in the adobo rubs, I don't find it too common that people put cilantro. But since some people do add their sofrito, which has cilantro in it, let's get creative. Let's just... That's what I love about cooking. You could just on the spot decide like, you know what? I think I am gonna add the cilantro. So let's go for it. So what we're gonna do here, just, and it's kind of specky and green like the oregano, a deeper green, right? That's cute. So we're gonna add one and a half. You just take your time, right? Why, why rush? Yes, honey, you're with me, darling. I don't wanna rush this opportunity to do a little show with you guys. So what you're doing is you're just stirring her up really nice. That's all you're doing with this, okay? Yes, darling. I feel so cha-cha with this wig. So this is what you, you just stir her up, darling, and you, you can smell it. It's just so fabulous. The oil, the vinegar, and all the spices. It should be like a marinade, not too watery now. It should be a little, a little thick. You know, a little thick. Yeah, that's fine. Again, this is just so, so simple. Essential in any Latin kitchen. I mean, you should have, not that you should, to recommend it, a psoriasis for the dial recommendation, that you keep this, you know, in your fridge all the time. Whenever you're gonna do some meats, you have this ready. You add a tablespoon or two, depending. What have I been doing? I've been doing like a tablespoon to like a pound of meat, all right? So, one and a half pounds of meat, a tablespoon, and you could just try it that way, see if it works for you. Remember, a little tip I've realized a long time ago, and I learned this on my own, that if some meat uh, that you cook and you season is a little too salty or too spicy, you, if it's, you, know, you can always rinse some, some of that spice off. And bring it back to the stove or the oven or whatever, that you're, you know, how you're cooking it, and, and take it from there. You know, taste it as you go along. If you need to add more, if you need to delete a little bit, erase it. <laughs> You know, get some makeup remover, honey. Makeup remover is the water, darling. Rinse it. Rinse a little bit, not all of it. And, and get your feel, see how it goes, and proceed with the recipe and keep, and keep cooking, honey. Keep turning that stove out, honey. And keep doing some fabulous recipes to keep your guests and all, you know, your family members that you cook for satisfied and happy with the meals that you're making, right? I think that's such a cool thing to cook. And people get so much gratification out of a home-cooked meal. I find it to be so nurturing and so fabulous. I mean, I cook every day. I may hop and puff and be like, oh my God, I gotta chop again, I gotta cut again, because I like my foods fresh every day, you know? I'm not too much of a leftovers person, but, because uh, I'll eat it all <laughs> if I just cook for myself, just, you know, one portion, whatever. But the next day, I really like my fresh meats and fresh foods, and, you know, so. Cooking is an act of love, darling, and it's self-love when you take care of your body and you take care of your mind and you have fun and you have a really good time and you look at new recipes and you find new ways to cook your meals. So I hope this Soraya Sobedas adobo wet rub sazonado was something interesting for you and I hope that you get to try it. If you have any feedback or any suggestions on how to make this a little better, um, <laughs> let me know kindly and um, we'll talk really, really soon. And actually, after this segment, I'm gonna do some empanadas. So the dough is already made, the meat filling is already made, I'm gonna assemble them. So if you wanna hang out, the next episode will be uh, my assembly of my uh, gluten-free disco empanadas. <laughs> so you make me feel like a natural, healthy Latin cooking diva chef. Ah, oh. see ya, bye.